Here we go. Yo, yo, yo. What's up, everyone? Happy Saturday. Good to see everyone. Actually, I haven't been on a live stream in two weeks. Two. It's the first time I've ever taken a week off. <laughs> I know, right? I need to take more time off. Billy's laughing back there. Uh, What's that, Billy? I think you have the old thumbnail on still. You think I have what? The old thumbnail still. No way. Yep. Music Theory Crash Course. No way. Hold on. I'm going to change it. I wonder if I can change it right now. Can I change it while I'm doing this? I bet I can. I bet you can too. Oh, boy. Hold on. I'm change it. Check this out. I did it. Here we go. I changed it, Billy. I wonder if it does. I don't think it matters, though, does it? Um, I'm refreshing to see if it changes anything. See if it changes. Does it change? I'm not seeing anything. It might take a while. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter. You guys saw my title, right? Yep. Okay. So the 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 comment section in these uh, other than the oh my god the um, the uh, <laughs> hilarious comments that are in the comment section. Oh my god, they are amazing. I saw. I'm gonna do a video where I just read some of the comments. The Funniest ones I've ever seen, I think, were in the metal. Um, we're in the metal one when I when I did the top ten Spotify songs uh, metal in the um, metal playlist. Oh my god! I there's a couple I screenshotted that were literally the the funniest things I've ever seen anyone write on any of the videos. So, um, but people ask me how I figure out the songs. Now, let me talk about those first. So people are like. Um, uh, so people are, are like, well, how do you, how does Rick do this? Well, what about the tunings on these songs? So with the metal stuff, those videos, Billy is doing the, Billy goes through and sets up all the guitars beforehand, right? And, uh, tunes them. So I have a lot of guitars here. People ask me why I have a lot of guitars. Honestly, it's because I produced so many metal bands in the past. And I was explaining to Billy that, uh, I would have them all set up in different tunings. So some would be in drop B, some would be a drop C, some would be in drop E flat, drop D flat. Anyways. Oh, by the way, discount code for today's live stream is RB410. RB410, today's date. 60% off my Beato book, uh, Instagram, YouTube transcription bundle, PDF, and 40% off the ear training course, which you're going to want to check out after this. So I'm going to talk about how I figure these things out. So they're like, well, how does Rick figure out the tunings? Well, Billy puts the guitars in the tunings, but the things are that these are so, um, they're so easy to figure out if you have basic ear training skills. And the ear training skills are related to your ability to hear intervals, right? And I've been harping on this one um, thing where I say your vocabulary of recognized sounds, okay? I want to, oh, everything okay, Billy? Yep. I thought you said something. So I want to talk about, like, for example, some of the hard songs that were in, on the list, like um, the um, Bruno Mars song, for example, on the latest pop list. Because that, uh, I mean, that was f m much more difficult than most of the metal songs. The metal songs, honestly, are pretty easy because they're riff-based a lot of the songs in metal are based off whatever the low string is, okay? If you got your low string tuned down to B, if it's tuned down to A, if it's tuned down to E, D, whatever it's tuned down to, a lot of the riffs will bounce off those particular things, right? So if I have a, um, you know, let's say I have something and I hear... Um, so let's say a riff like this... That's an old filter song, right? Now, uh, that riff is based off the low string. So the only thing that I needed to do was figure out that it's in drop D. And, and I look for clues of things, like if they got... 
if it's in power chords, you can actually just use common sense. Let me turn out, let me move this keyboard here. You can see, you can actually use common sense and say, well, you can't really play, play power chords uh, that quickly. Well, I mean, Metallica can, <laughs> James Hetfield can, but a lot of power chords, uh, when you have them really fast like that, there's only one way that you can do it, and that's with a drop D tuning. So instantly you listen, okay, is the guitar tuned down? What's the tuning? Is it drop D? Is it drop E flat? Is it drop uh, uh, D flat? Is it drop C? Um, and once you figure that out, a lot of times I'll just play the note and I'll see, okay, yeah, that matches what the low note is, right? And then I know what the riffs are at, out of that. But you'll find these common... These common patterns. Oh my God, so many of the songs in the metal list use a lot of just pentatonic stuff, right? Pentatonic chord progressions, or they'll do the old half step, uh, uh, you know, Phrygian thing, right? The flat two to one. Sometimes you'll have uh, the flat five some, but typically those are the notes that are, <laughs> that are used, you know. And it's so easy to figure them out. Almost every single song on the metal playlist used those particular chords. The only difference was they had different tunings. Okay, so that's simple. The guitar stuff is simple. Where does it start to get tricky? Well, you know, the single note things, whether it's Gojira, whether it's um, Attila, Epica, who were some of the other bands, Billy, that were on the list that we listened to? Um, you say Gojira, right? Yeah. Uh, Gajira, Attila, um, Architects. Architects. I mean, the, most of these songs used, honestly, the, like in the chord progressions, uh, in the choruses, they, they have a lot of similar um, movement of the chords. And the, the changes are all dependent on the tuning. Where it gets tricky are songs like the Bruno Mars song. This is where you actually have to have a decent ear. Because there's a few things happening. They, he has chords with sevenths in them. He has inversions. He has modulations. And that there's that's probably the most complex song that I've figured. No, that's definitely the most complex song on any of the Spotify playlists by far. Now, is it complex compared to? Uh, let me give you an equivalent of a rock song. Is it as complex as? Um, it's. It's probably equal to um, Black Hole Sun or something like that, as far as the amount of chords that are in the song, something like that, right? Uh, but that song starts on um, on F major seven. Now, as soon as I hear that, I think, okay, Earth, Wind, and Fire, Phil Collins. You've heard these things like a million times, right? I have. I hear that progression. I'm like, oh, it's the old major seven <laughs> down to the two over one <laughs> when i say two over one that's like g major over f and i recognize it because it's in a million songs oh my god it's in like every r b song every soul song from the 70s you know uh it's just in so many songs oh my god so Then he drops down to the old E minor 7 song to, to A minor 7, okay? Okay, so well, how do you figure those things out? Well, I can tell in the first chord that it's a major 7th chord. So I'm living my, um, so I'm, I'm listening to it and I hear that, I hear the 7th. So I, I notice it's not a triad, okay? Levi, Levi Clay. What's up, Levi? Good to see you, my friend. Um, so I realize that there's not a triad. Thanks, Josh. Uh, that, that there's a seventh on the chord. And then I next listen for the bass motion. And the bass motion, well, there is none. Because it goes to a two over one. So this is G over F. Now, if you want to talk about the theory behind this, well, it's not that important. But this is really a G7 chord with a seventh in the bass. But I 
like to call this just a two over one chord. That's that's kind of a shorthand. And it is, once again, the one of the most common chords of the uh, of the 70s. You're gonna hear some more of the common chords of the 70s. Then this, then I notice that the bass motion goes down a half step and it's a minor seventh chord. So you can start deducing things. If you have a major seventh chord as the first chord, then you're gonna you're gonna start saying, okay, there's probably gonna be a lot of seventh chords. So just start looking for those right off the bat. These are things that you can use, just common sense. Okay, if the first chord's a major seventh, you're probably gonna have a lot of seventh chords. Okay, so then it goes to A E minor seven, then to A minor seven, then he does this walk up uh, to C, and then we have our first modulation. Okay, it goes up to E flat major seven and then A flat major seven. Okay, so how do you know it goes up to E flat major seven? Well, you're on C and then I hear the bass motion, da, da, up a minor third to E flat major seven. Now, how do you know that it's E flat major seven? Because um, once again, this is part of my vocabulary of recognize sounds. You just know what a major seventh chord sounds like. If you take my ear training course, okay, my Beato ear training course, it will test you on major seventh chords. It will test you on inverted, all inverted seventh chords. Major sevenths, minor sevenths, dominant sevenths, minor seven flat fives, diminished seventh chords. Uh, you know, minor nine chords, minor 11 chords, minor 13 chords, major 13 chords, major seven sharp 11 chords, all these kind of things you begin to recognize by the repetition of them, okay? Uh, so, E flat major seven, what's up? Oh, oh yeah, let me put Cordy back on, sorry everybody. So E flat major seven, then I listen, da, da. So I just sang the interval, da, da. I hear that interval of a fifth, the movement of a fifth to another major seventh chord. This, In this case, A flat major seven chord, okay? Um, so when I'm on E flat, once I've modulated from C up to E flat, then I'm thinking like, okay, well, I'm, I'm either gonna be in the key of E flat if, since it's a major seventh chord or the key of A flat, okay? Those are typically what, uh, when you have a modulation, what you would have, okay? So if it's an E flat, uh, you have the, that would be the one chord and the four chord would be e, would be A flat major seven. And I recognize that major seven sound, but then he does a walk down. So from the A flat major seven, he goes um, to G minor seven to F minor seven, but then here's the money. Uh, then he goes to the, um, this is kind of the opposite of the first chord, which was the dominant 11 chord, as I call it, or the flat seven over one, if you will. This G11 chord is the second most common type chord that you hear, no, it's the most common chord that you hear in the 70s. Anyone that was around in the 70s or figures out any soul songs or R&B songs or any Steely Dan songs. This is really honestly more R&B and soul. You hear this this chord, this 11 chord, okay? It's a 9-11 chord. So this chord here is uh, F major over G, but it has a very specific sound to it. As soon as I hear it, I'm like, oh, an 11 chord. Um, some people call it a sus chord, but it's got the nine and 11. So, so if you think of the scale here, start on G. So it's a G mixolydian scale, right? So but here's the, the chord. So it's a dominant, so you have the flat seven, you have the nine and the 11. So the walk down, so A flat major seven, um, then you got, um, uh, it goes like a dun, 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 dun. And then it goes to, back to the chorus. Uh, 
then does a buildup. Oh, sorry. I think that's what it does. Yeah, yeah, build up F major 7. Da, 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 da. Um, and that's it. I mean, so really it's using a lot of these same chords. When you get to the bridge, the bridge goes to um, A flat major 7, then to um, uh, uh, let me think about this here. Um, I think it's A flat major 7. Yeah, it goes between A flat major seven and uh, G and F over G. Does it twice, and then um, uh, where's it go? F sharp major seven, and then to I think it's E flat over F. Yes, E flat over F. Right. Um. Oh, no, 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 no. It goes F major 7 build. Oh, so the F major 7 build up. Okay, here we go. Then it goes, I'm sorry, sorry, the chorus. C major 7. Then, then it goes to A7 flat 9. That's what it does at the end of the chorus. I'm trying to, I wrote a quick chart out for this here. Okay, now, this is the only movement that is... This isn't even weird, really, honestly. This so you got the um, dominant eleven chords. This is really a five one chord. Now you hear this in Carol King and James Taylor in Earth, Wind, and Fire in the OJ's in uh, every Motown. It's not Motown. It's more like soul R and B stuff from the seventies. Every singer songwriters. Oh my God, everybody uses this stuff. But this G eleven. This C major seven, but this is kind of to the A seven flat nine chord. Now, why do I know that? Um, because that's the most common chord progression in jazz, pretty much. The one chord, let's say you're in the key of C to the six chord, dominant six flat nine. Now, how do you recognize that it's a dominant flat nine chord? Once again, this is part of my vocabulary of recognized sounds, okay? So, I, when I hear it, I just know, oh, that's a dominant seven flat nine chord. So, what do I listen for? Well, I would listen for the... Da. I'd listen for that root movement of C down to A, and I hear the major seven down to the to the dominant, to the uh, dominant flat nine chord. But I don't even need to listen to that. As soon as I hear that movement of this, to this, to this, I instantly know what those are. And this is from ear training. This is actually more than just intervals. So when I talk about intervals with my ear training course, and I'll give it a plug here once again, um, discount code is RB410, 40% um, off my ear training course and 60% off uh, my Beato book, YouTube, Instagram transcription bundle, which is about a 700 page PDF. Um, now, my Beato book starts with intervals. And my ear training course starts with intervals. Okay. Why is that? Because intervals are the basis of all ear training. Okay. Your ability to recognize da, da, being able to know what the notes sound like before you play them. Okay. Um, and you do this by uh, using relative pitch. So I am measuring the distance from one note to the next. That's what an interval is, okay? It's the distance from one pitch to the next. And you're constantly referencing, um, once you have a reference tone and you go, da, you just know what that, um, I sang the note and I knew I was singing a major third above the starting note. 
I didn't need to know that the first note was C. You can see that I'm playing a C there. And if I go da, I know it's gonna be that note. Then da, I know it's gonna be that note, okay? I am measuring those notes against each other. Up a major third, up a whole step or, or major second, up a half step, okay? So um, that is what an interval is. It's the distance from one pitch to the next. Now, it doesn't matter how intervals are named really, but you cannot separate music theory from ear training. I said it in the last thing two weeks ago, they are the same. You cannot understand what you're hearing unless you know the names of it. I posted a thing on my Instagram yesterday. It was just a funny little post. It was about ear training. And I had my son Dylan in it and my daughter Layla. But um, by the way, follow me on Instagram. I do a lot of uh, uh, little lessons, music lessons on there. It's a more sophisticated. If you're a more sophisticated player, you'll you'll dig it. It's our Rick Beato one on Instagram. You should definitely follow follow me there. But um, what I did was I said, I talked about doing ear training and not just with my son Dylan, because I played a chord something like this in the video. And Dylan's like, you know, C, A flat, B flat, D flat, E flat, B, right? And I'm trying to name that chord. It's like, well, what is that chord really? Well, it doesn't, you can't really name it. And that's because you have the notes uh, B flat. You have the note B, you have the note C, and you have the note D flat. Those are four chromatic notes in a row, which we call an X cell. Those are very difficult, nearly impossible to figure out unless you have some serious ear training or perfect pitch. But what I did was I taught Dylan or I had him figure out chord progressions to things. Well, he could figure out simple chord progressions. So in the video he's playing, he's playing things like a, Okay, those are what we call bitonal chords, or triads over bass notes. It starts out with a D flat over C, E flat over B, that would be a Lydia augmented, then E over G, then F sharp over F, or G flat over F, and then G over E flat to, uh, would be like a uh, B flat sus2 over D. Okay, and then I think he played. And he plays this B-flat Lydian sound over it. And he figured that out from an Aydin Essen, who's one of my biggest musical influences, probably, no, my biggest musical influence, from something that Aydin improvised 30 years ago. And I said, Dylan, what is that chord progression? He's like, oh, yeah, it's uh, this, 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 this. And he just knows that, right? How does he know that? Well, he hears the triads. He can instantly recognize the triads against that. Well, that's because of perfect pitch. The important thing was, though, is getting these things under his fingers because once he started hearing these, this became his library of recognized sounds, okay? So it doesn't matter if you have perfect pitch or not or you're using relative pitch because there's sound recognitions of, of chord types, chord qualities, minor chords, major chords, dominant seventh chords, minor eleventh chords. If I play this... I know that that's a minor 11. I don't know it's G minor 11, although I probably would know now because I've been playing a bunch of stuff and I know where C is, right? But this is a G minor 11. If I play this, that's a G minor 13, okay? This, and I can recognize this. I can recognize this B flat Lydian triad in inversions, I can recognize that by ear. And once I hear that over G in the bass, I know it's a G minor 13. I also know it's a G minor 13, flat seven, minor third, 13. I can recognize it on many different levels because of interval training. And the interval training starts off very simply. A perfect fourth major second, okay? So what I'm doing when I say, I say perfect fourth, da, da is a perfect fourth interval, and then da, da is a major second interval. 
and da uh, is another major second above that next note and da uh, is another major second above that note okay so i can hear those notes and i'm relating one to the next to the next to the next to the next okay so you use this that in combination with your vocabulary of recognized sounds this sound is a dominant seven flat nine as soon as i hear that i'm like dominant flat nine i just know it I don't need anyone to tell me that's a dominant seven flat nine. If I hear this, I know major seven. You know, I know that minor 13 sound. I just instantly recognize those. So what you need to do uh, to get a great ear is practice intervals and and practice figuring out songs. So there's, there's a few different things uh, that, that you need to know. The music theory about understanding what chords are in a key. So 99% of the songs on Spotify that I have figured out over the la over the four videos I've made use all diatonic chords, except three of the songs out of the top 10 pop songs had a major three chord. So if, if you're in the key of C, the major, the normal three chord would be would be E minor. But in these cases, a major three would be would be E major, okay? Normally the three chord is minor. That is like the only chord that I heard. Is that right, Billy? Out of all these things that we heard a major three, I think three, three different weeks, three different songs used it. And that's like the most basic thing, a major three chord. It's in a million songs. I mean, people have been doing it for, for whatever. These things have gotten so simple that you can just deduce. Once you figure out the first chord, okay, a C chord. Well, C can only come from three keys. This is where your music theory comes from, right? It can be the one chord in the key of C. It can be the five chord in the key of F, right? And it can be the four chord in the key of G, right? So that's it. It can only come, C major can only come from three keys. C major, or uh, C major chord can only come from three keys. C major, F major, G major. Okay, that's it. So once I hear a chord like that, and I recognize if it's on guitar, I go, okay, yeah, that's a C chord. Then I listen for whatever the next chord is. If I hear, whoops, I'm in a, if I hear, that chord next, I'm like, oh, well, that must be the five chord in F. But if I hear G next, I know I'm in the key of G and it's a four to one, okay? Or I know that I'm in the key of C and it's one to five, okay? But you can pretty much, if C is the first chord, you know, a lot of times, not every time, your, your tonic chord is gonna be your first chord. It doesn't always happen. But um, but the songs are so simple that I've figured out that I pretty much know what the other chords are. Once I hear two of the chords, you you know what the things coming up are. You just listen real fast. I listen for the bass motion, and then I already know if it's major or minor because I know the chord pattern. In a major key, the one chord is major, two chord is minor, three chords minor, four chords major, five chord ma is major, six chords minor, seven chords diminished. If you know that. And you can recognize, oh, oh, that third, the chord that's built off the third is a major instead of a minor. Oh, it's a major three chord. Boom, you know it. It's that simple. It's really that simple. Okay, let me answer some of these uh, uh, questions here. Uh, uh, Super Jets uh, from Vinci says, Rick, um, does anyone know if it's possible to purchase a physical copy? I don't sell a physical copy of my book. Tom, uh, cheers. Thank you, Tom. Um, Neil Massey, thoughts on John Sykes? John Sykes is a great guitarist. It happens to be one of my my brother's, one of his favorite guitar, probably his favorite guitar, but I love John Sykes. And my old, and my assistant GL. Loves John Sykes. He's a killer player. Uh, L Apollo, L.A. A, a, LA Piano Place. So I'm like, I don't have my glasses on. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, so, uh, and uh, Craig, thank you very much. Appreciate that. So that's, that's what I have to say about ear training. 
uh, when Billy, he figures out the, he does the tunings of the guitars. He hands me the guitars and I figure out the stuff on the spot. They're so easy. Oh my God. The only song that's been, that takes more than three seconds to figure out, and I'm not bragging or anything. It's just, I've just done this ear training since, you know, since the seventies, honestly. And, and good interval training that you have in my Beato ear training course, you just can figure out anything. Like once you get this down, you have it and you have it for your whole life. And, and there's, and there's a real power in there. There's a power in being able to hear these things and, and knowing what they are. Okay. When I hear that, that chord, that dominant 11 chord, the fact that I hear it and I know the sound of it is very empowering. It makes it really fun. Okay. Uh, discount code RB410, um, 60% off my Beato book, Instagram, YouTube transcription bundle, 40% off the ear training course. This is how I support my channel. Every time I do these Instagram videos, like, or the videos on Spotify, they always get demonetized. By the way, follow me on Instagram. All those videos get demonetized. I get 10 demonetization things. I don't make any money off those. My top 20 lists and everything, none of that stuff. I don't make any money from these views for, for, uh, on, on my channel. They just, um, and people that complain about the ads in them, I can't control the ads on those videos. Get an ad blocker and just blo block the ads. They're, I think they're free. Billy, are ad blockers free? Yeah. Ad blockers are free. For those of you out there watching, you can get, YouTube probably hates, they can probably recognize us. They probably hate that I mentioned that, but whatever. Uh, don't worry about ads. Anything that's going to get demonetized, any of these videos where I use other music, they get demonetized. I have no control. And they put these mid-roll ads that are annoying. I know. Totally kills the flow of the videos. So uh, anyways, all right. So that's my spiel on that. That's kind of my process for figuring out the stuff. Um, you can learn about transposing through the ear training course. But the two things are, are interdependent. The music theory is ear training. Ear training is music theory. They are simply indistinguishable from one another. You have to know music theory for ear training. You have to know what things are called, okay? You do, period, end of story. You gotta know some things. So, you know, there you go. There's nothing I can do about that. That's, that's memorization. All right, knowing the circle of fists. I've done many videos on this. If you're looking for them, go in my archive playlists here on YouTube. Uh, but other than that, you guys are amazing. Sorry that I've been off for two weeks here. Uh, it's actually been good. Billy, we good? We are all good. Well, we got, uh, we got uh, two more Super Chats here. Two more Super Chats. Okay, real fast. Let's see here. Um, uh, Bithan uh, Nick. Galarue, fair play, Rick. Okay, that, I, I'm sorry I pronounced it so bad. No E 101, E flat major seven to D flat major seven plus four is so beautiful. It is. Okay, you guys are awesome. Have a great rest of your weekend. Take care.